Can you imagine if you can tap into that community and you be the go-to person? If you can tap into a market like that and be dominate that market, you can make a lot of money. You can make a lot of impact. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Danny here, the Multiple Strings Queen. I am back after my Belize vacation. Um, I did a video talking about how to even travel to Belize. So catch that. Uh, we're still editing that video because it was pretty long. Uh, but today I want to talk about building relationships. If you have not already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Share it with somebody that wants to get into business, someone that wants to get into the Airbnb business. Uh, I am also a, a retired emergency room travel nurse. So send your nurse friends my way that are tired of the floor that want to start another business. Because I got some special news that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I'm really excited about. But anyhow, today I want to talk to you guys about building relationships as it pertains to your short-term rental business. How do you do that? Why is it important? Why does it even matter? So let's just get right into it. Um, I have, let me give y'all a little rundown about who I am. Danny, the multiple streams queen, I have been able to go from zero to over 40 units in just a year. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. This business has allowed me to retire from nursing. So I love what I do because I get to serve people just in a different capacity. Uh, I've learned a lot along this journey and I'm still learning. I will always be a forever learner. So I'm glad that you're on my channel so you can share my journey and I can share my experiences with y'all. But let me tell you about the importance of building relationships as it pertains to your business, right? Um once you actually get your yes, right, even before you get your yes, it is important to tell people what you're doing. Um, talk to people about what you're doing, that you're building a business, what you want your business to be about. Who are you serving, right? Who are Who is your business serving? Anytime you start a business, it should be out of a need base, right? Uh, don't just start a business just because. There's some research that needs to go behind it, right? You got to know. Who wants what you have or who wants what you're selling? Uh, so what solution are you providing to your marketplace, to consumers and also to other businesses? So you really have to get keen on that and understand your business. Um, a lot of people will tell you do a business plan. And when I got into business and started looking into business plans, I am not going to lie. It was scary and intimidating and they were long. And I was like, who can do all that? <laughs> you know, 20 and 30 page business plans. It was just very intimidating, very uncomfortable. But what I can tell you is that your business plan doesn't have to be that long, right? It doesn't have to be that long. Uh, if you understand why your business exists, right? What is your business in existence for? What purpose or solution is it solving, right? Um, understand um do like a SWOT analysis, right? So understand the strengths of your business, the weaknesses of your business, the opportunities, right? And let me get what the T stands for. So I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Yes, SWOT analysis. And the T is threats, right? So SWOT analysis, the strengths of your business, weaknesses of your business, opportunities for improvement, and the threats of your business, right? So it's important to know what it, what solution your business provides and solves, but then also it's important for you to know your competition. Who is your direct competition, direct and indirect? Who is that competition? What are they doing that they can do better, that you have an opportunity now to whatever they're doing bad? You can do good or well or great and improve your business, right? What are they doing great that you didn't even think about that you can use in your business? Not saying go in and steal somebody else's business model, but, but your competition can give you a lot of insight on the market, right? On your market. So just doing a basic business plan. 
what problem is your business solving? Uh, what do doing that SWOT analysis? Then also just knowing your market, right? Do you want to grow where you are? Do you want to start branching off into different states? Do you want to go international? Just figuring those things out and having some type of plan, right? Write it down. And you can always go back to it and say, you know what? This market is not doing so well because of this, this, and this. Maybe I need to look into another market, write that down, start researching it, and then you can pivot over there. But have some type of plan to go from, right? You can always go back and change it. You don't have to stick to that plan, but have some type of plan. Don't just be out here just winging it like, oh, I'm going to go here, 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 because I'm telling y'all, I didn't start out perfect. Uh, right. I did not. <laughs> I did not have everything together. I've tried a few different markets. Some of them work. Some some of them didn't. Um, but it was different clientele. It was just a different way that I had to serve that particular clientele. So doing your research beforehand will help you once you're g- getting your business up and running. Right. Have some type of business plan. Because a lot of people that you may meet, especially that have been in business for a while, they may ask you like, what, you know, what is it that you do? What is it that you're trying to do? And if you don't know, it's very hard for them to know if they want to do business with you, if they're going to recommend someone to you, right? There's something called an elevator pitch, which basically it kind of stems from if you had 60 or 30 seconds to be in the elevator with someone and they ask you what you do, you have to basically on the spot. What is it that you do? Who are you? What does your company do? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? Right. Instead of you like, oh, yeah, I do Airbnb. And, you know, I got a car. I put that on Turo sometimes. You know, I'm a nurse. And you all over the place. Right. You don't know who that other person is. Right. And you just basically telling them every you do a million and one things. They're they're confused. You confused. Now they're confused. Now they is dead. The conversation is done. <laughs> Versus let's just say they were the housing coordinator for a college. And you're standing in the elevator with them. And instead of you saying, oh, I have a corporate housing company or a short term rental company and we specialize in serving. Da, 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 you have told them everything else, and now you have totally missed an opportunity. Or they could be married to some housing coordinator for the military or for a college or for whatever business. And because you didn't, you don't even know what you do, you can't verbalize to them what you do. And now you you just totally miss an opportunity. And before you say like stuff don't happen like that, it does. <laughs> It really does. It really does. It does. <laughs> I promise you. It really, really does. Okay. So really sit down. Do you you don't have to do a long, drawn out business plan. There's a, a app that I use at one time. I believe the name of it is called Live Plan. I'm pretty sure that is the name of the app that helps you and kind of walks you through with videos and uh, words and basically helping you do your business plan. Super easy, super simple. And I promise you, like they make it really simple for you to actually do a business plan. But business plans are very helpful. Knowing your business model is very helpful. Uh, having just a quick little elevator pitch. What do you do? Who who are you? What do you do? Who do you serve? You know, how do you serve them? Very quick. It doesn't have to be this long drawn out thing, right? But that will help you when you're actually going to pitch to communities. When you're going to apartment complexes and you're talking to property managers or assistant property managers, sometimes even the regional managers or landlords, it really helps when you come across as professional when uh, you can verbalize an actual business and not just, I want your apartments to put them on Airbnb because I tell people all the time, Airbnb is their platform. It doesn't belong to you, right? So you want to have some type of plan. Do not put all of your eggs in one basket. Have a plan in case just hypothetically, you know, if that platform were to just shut down today or tomorrow, what are you going to do? Right. So you got to have a plan. I always got to have some type of backup plan or another way for you to generate income with your business. And you should not be solely relying on Airbnb. 
Airbnb is great. I've made a lot of money and still make a lot of money on the platform, uh, but you still have to have a way to generate income outside of the booking platforms. Yes, you can get your own direct booking site. Um, that is awesome. But building relationships will help you do that as well. I talk to people a lot about having a business model uh, because it, it goes a long way. Uh, I've had a, a student who basically said that she wanted to specialize in housing snowbirds, right? So people that live in a colder region, uh, they go down to the southern regions, you know, more so like Florida and places like that for uh, the summer. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, for the winter times because they don't want to be cold. They don't want to be in the snow. So they migrate down uh, during the winter time to warmer climates, warmer places. And those are the people that she specifically wanted to house. It's a great market, right? Can you imagine if you can tap into that community and you be the go-to person, right? You're the go-to person. Everybody can't afford to have vacation homes or vacation rentals uh, where they have a home up in New York, let's just say, New York or New Jersey, and then they want to come down to Florida every winter. Everybody may not be able to afford two mortgages, right? So maybe they can rent from you when they're in town. Right. If you can tap into a market like that and be dominate that market, you can make a lot of money. You can make a lot of impact. Right. Instead of you just like, oh, I'm just going to go on Airbnb. I don't know who my clientele is. I don't know who my customer is, but I'm just going to put it on Airbnb and I'm going to figure it out. Like we'll figure it out when we figure it out. Right. Um, a lot of people miss military families, military relocations. If you can tap into that market and serve only those people, like you can do some amazing things. Me being a travel nurse, uh, reaching out to recruiters, reaching out to agencies um, to work with them directly or be a referral source for their professionals that are coming to my region will be amazing, right? If you're the number one referral for them or one of the top two, let's just say referrals for them, you will always retain, always have business, right? And you're not relying on just Airbnb, right? So I'm supposed to be talking to you guys about building relationships, kind of got off into business models, but that's okay because that's something that needs to be talked about more uh, because people just, you know, that I feel like being in the business, that is kind of where people go wrong. Um, they just think that it's as simple as getting an apartment, furnishing it and putting it on Airbnb, and then they're going to be rich overnight. And that is not the case, right? Um, when you don't really have a lot of education, uh, when you just went into it with that mind frame, uh, you're kind of going into it failing already because you haven't, you don't have a plan. You know, you, you don't have a plan to succeed. You don't really have a plan to grow. Uh, you're just trying to figure it out as you go along. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't want you to waste your money. So I want you to, to go into it and have some type of plan, have some type of baseline knowledge so you can go and, you know, know how you're going to pivot if something were to happen, right? With your Airbnb account, or, you know, it helps you when you're actually going to actually pitch to these people because you have, you know exactly who you're serving. So you can go and you can pitch them better, right? Yeah. If the, the conversation comes up, uh, talking about Airbnb and you know that that is the only platform or one of the main platforms you want to host on, that's when you get nervous and you're fidgety and you're like, oh my God, I don't know what to say versus you're like, oh no, uh, I am a referral source for this agency or I'm a referral source for these are my clientele that come down during this time. And so, yeah, probably uh, during the summer times, I may be listening on some booking platforms, uh, whatever the case may be. Right. But if you can go in and say, hey, no, I serve this population of people and I have a direct uh, referral source uh, that frequently sends referrals to me. 
on, you know, on a weekly basis or a daily basis or whatever that looks like for you, it's easier for you to go and talk about your business because you're not just all about Airbnb. Uh, I am very transparent with people and let them know, hey, yes, we will be using Airbnb sometimes, but that is not our main source of clientele. When you get when you start to get direct referrals, when you start to get actual contracts, uh, when you're working with different companies. So it's easier for you to go in and for you to pitch. Right. And you can be transparent, be transparent, because what you don't want to happen is you go in and you pitch them on saying that your employees are going to be staying there. And then people go into the office and like, oh, I'm checking into my Airbnb. It will happen. Right. It definitely, definitely will happen. And it happens all the time. OK, because I promise you uh, someone is going to walk into that office and they are going to say the forbidden words. When, but when you go into a relationship being honest, you don't have to worry about being in trouble. Oh, my God. What is the leasing office going to say? Because you've already kind of told them what you're going to do. Uh, and so that helps you when you're building relationships, when you're going into it with integrity, with honesty, and you're not lying to them and saying, oh, no, this is for my employees. You don't have, we're not going to use, use Airbnb. We're not going to be doing that. And then you turn around and they find out that you are, right? So you don't want to ruin a relationship because when you're honest uh, with people, they can refer you to other buildings, right? Actually going in and building a relationship with some of those property managers can get you up to regional managers and district managers of larger property management companies. And you can help them solve problems, right? People that own apartment buildings, they like for them to be occupied. Right. If you're not into real estate um, and you don't have to be well versed in it, I am not. Uh, when it comes to commercial real estate, um, the a part of the way that the how much a building is worth uh, kind of depends on the occupancy rate. Right. So if that owner wanted to sell or if that owner wanted to refinance that building, uh, a part of that calculation would be the occupancy rate, right? The occupancy rate. So not only are you solving problems for your consumers, whether that be nurses or nursing agencies, whether that be the snowbirds, whether that be the, the cosmetic surgery dials, whether that be military families, you're not only solving a problem for them by providing them somewhere to um home, a home and accommodations to stay. Uh, but now you're solving a problem for the apartment buildings, right? Because if they have 20 or 30 empty apartments, guess what? You and your network can help them solve and decrease that, that, that low occupancy rate, right? You're solving a problem. It costs money for apartments to be empty. It is not just an empty apartment sitting. It costs them, it costs them money for those apartments to be sitting empty. Utilities are being paid, right? So they are in the negative every single day that that apartment is empty. So if you can help them solve a problem, right? And that's why I tell people all the time because they always ask about addendums. For the most part, um, just from my experience, you can definitely try to get addendum signed, uh, but a lot of times the paperwork and the lease agreements, especially with the larger apartment complexes and with the larger property management companies, the, um, the leases that they use have been approved by their legal team. So addendum is a legal document that you're asking them to, to change something in that lease. A lot of times the property manager doesn't have the authority to change the lease, right? A lot of times the property manager doesn't even have the authority sometimes to sign the addendums. Um, it really just depends what the, the language that is in there. Um, 
But again, it's a case by case basis. Every apartment complex is different. Uh, so as it pertains to getting uh, addendum signed and basically addendum uh, is basically them giving you permission to operate your business and to list it on uh, third party websites or to list it on any type of booking websites. Um, we have had more luck when we are negotiating for a larger amount of apartments instead of just one. Um, that's why we had to change our turnkey process because uh, the apartment complexes, when you're just getting one apartment, they didn't, it was very hard for them to play ball when you're just taking one apartment. But if you're coming in and you're taking 10 or 15 or 20 apartments off of their hands and helping them with their occupancy rate, you can negotiate a lot right? You can negotiate a lot and always go in and tell people again, tell them your plan. What is it that you want to do? If you know that you would love to grow within their company, let them know, hey, do you have any sister companies in, that are in the area? Or you have any sister companies and what areas are they in, right? Uh, so you can just put it put it on their mind like, hey, we want to grow. We would love to grow with you guys. And guess what? the word will spread very quickly, especially if you're doing good business. If you're being honest, you're being transparent, you're paying your rent, you're not having any, any issues with your guests. Um, they will tell other property managers, they will tell other people within the company, because again, you're helping to solve some type of problem, right? And so they can refer you to their sister properties. They can pull some strings for you with their sister properties, or they may know someone who knows someone and they can get you into another property. But you have to build those relationships. And the way that you build those relationships is on honesty and transparency and integrity. Do what you say you're going to do. Right. So don't just say, oh, this is what I do. And you know that you don't and you're not even making any plans to to build another relationship with the company to get direct referrals. Right. And you're only using Airbnb. Um, do what you say you're going to do. Be honest, be transparent. And so you can build good relationships. And sometimes some of those property managers or some of those property management companies have ties and relationships in different states and different areas. So if you got approved here, they're like, oh, you're good. You can go wherever. And all I got to do is basically just make a phone call and you're good to go. Build those relationships. The same thing applies when you're trying to get direct contracts, when you're trying to get direct referrals. Start building those relationships with people, right? Don't just go and say, oh my, well, there's not a contract for this or there's no such thing. Make it. There's something that... Um, me and a friend are working on down in Houston uh, that I don't want to put out there, but it's going to be a major, major, major thing uh, once we solidify it uh, for not only for me, but for my clients that are down in Houston uh, to basically guarantee them people coming in and out of their unit for longer terms, for longer terms. So I'm really, really excited about that. I'm really excited about uh, growing that in other parts of the country because it's going to be pretty major, pretty major. So um, once I get the green light to talk about it, uh, once all the details have been finalized with that contract, I'll, you know, you guys will be the first to know. But Build your relationships. That will go a long way when you're building your Airbnb business. The same thing applies to landlords. They probably have more than one property. They know other landlords. They know other real estate investors. Start going to your uh, local real estate investor meetups, whether it's virtual or in person. And I promise you, you're going to meet somebody that you can connect with, that you can collaborate with, uh, that probably has property or know someone that has properties or they fix and flip, flip properties, get with property managers too. They are like some of the go-to people. Those property managers, they know contractors, they know um, landlords, they know real estate investors, and they already, they know before you even ask, like, they're like, oh, you know what? I think I can get that landlord on board and they wouldn't mind working to you. Talk to some property managers. Go to your local real estate investors um, clubs and meetups. Join them and start talking to people. Tell people what you do. 
build relationships, right? So many people are like, oh my God, I can't get a yes or I can't find a place. And they're going to apartment complexes, go to private landlords. All of the apartment complexes are not owned and operated and run and ran by uh, property management companies. There are, you know, um, landlords that have six plexes or eight plexes or, you know, 10 unit buildings that you can go in and you can talk to them and you can get units directly from the landlords. So stop thinking that you have to go to these big, lavish, fancy apartment buildings and sometimes think outside of the box. Go directly to the landlord. Get a single family home if that's something that you're ready to take on. But don't get stuck at, oh, my God, I can't get a yes from apartment complexes. Think outside of the box. Think outside of the box. But anyhow, um, all of my digital products, for all of my subscribers, thank you guys for being here with me on this channel, for subscribing to my channel. Any digital product, any ebook that I come out with, you guys will always get 50% off. Use the code YouTube. You will always get 50% off. Any live webinar that I have, you will always get $50 off. I actually have a webinar coming up August 23rd at 7, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, basically talking about uh, creating more income in your life and in your business. I have I have my name for a reason, the Multiple Streams Queen. Uh, I have several streams of income, uh, whether they be active or passive. A lot of them are passive uh, that my money is in and just making money for me. Uh, and so I want to talk to people about how to do that just in their life and then also in their business, different ways that you can make money. So if you're interested in anything like that, um, I will have the recording up for sale if you cannot catch the live webinar, August 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am having a live webinar just talking about how to create multiple streams of income. If you can't catch the live, I probably will put the recording up there for sale. And you guys, since you're on my channel, will get $50 off using the code YouTube. Any ebook that I have, you guys will get 50% off using the code YouTube. So again, thank you for being uh, being on my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Send anybody else my way that wants to get into this business, that just wants to learn about business in general. Thank you. Until next time. <laughs>